Hi there. In this video, I'm going to talk about active job. Sometimes we want to perform more complex operations in our API. For example, imagine we want to update an external stock keeping application every time someone creates a new book via our API. We don't want to do the whole request synchronously because waiting for an external API to respond could take time. And this is going to affect our API performance and ultimately it could cause requests to back up and start to fail. Instead, what we want to do is return a response quickly to the API caller so that it knows the request has been successfully um, processed then we can perform the complex operation asynchronously. To demonstrate this, I've built a little SKU application, which has a single endpoint that we need to call every time we create a new book. As a first step, let's add the API call to our controller. So let's open the books controller. And so every time we create a new book, we want to make this API call. So what I'm going to do is use net HTTP. In fact, let me have a look at the docs. So here's an example, we need to require net HTTP and I think we can do something similar to this. Um, so we're going to be making a call to localhost uh, 4567. This is the port that my SKU application is running on. And the endpoint is update SKU. Now I should say that the, the specifics of this API call are not important. The point is to simulate an external API call. And what I've actually done is purposefully made this API call very slow to respond. It should take 10 seconds to respond. So that's going to, going to allow us to see the difference between doing the request all synchronously or doing it uh, asynchronously. So, so yeah, here's the URL, and this should be a post request. Um, actually, let me try and find a post example. Yeah, so I think we need to do net HTTP. Uh, I think we can do post new. So net HTTP post new with the URI, um, we need the content type. Application JSON. And then we, uh, if we assign this, so this would be the request, then we can do request body. Um, and then I can basically um, provide some params. So the SKU number, for now we'll just hard code it. As I said, the specifics of this API call are not important. And then we're also going to pass the book name from the book params. And then we need to call to JSON on that. And then we can get the request, the response, sorry, by doing net HTTP start. Um, so if there's an example of this, I'll start. Yeah, so host and port. Let's take that. Um, let's go host name and request. 
Okay, so that should work. And let's run the let's run the call request now, see if it's working, and then we can have a look at the um, API performance. Before I test this with curl, I'm just going to comment out the um, author and the book creation because it's not strictly required. And I'm just going to do a raise here. So by doing this, I'm just isolating the API call that I want to test. I'm going to jump over to the console. Let's open a new tab. And if I reverse search, I should find the previous, um, here we go, post request that was made. So this is making a post request to uh, API books. We're trying to create a new book called Eloquent Ruby um, with the author, first name, last name and age. So let's have a go at that. And permission denied because, sorry, uh, connection refused because I haven't run the server. Let's try that again. And we get an exception. Undefined local variable or method HTTP. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the block parameter. There we go, so let's retry this again. So the request is running. It exited here. Yeah, okay, so you can see the, the um, there was the runtime error, the exit error. Uh, you can see here that our SKU server received the request. But the important thing that I want you to notice is how long uh, this takes to execute. Um, and you can imagine that if we had multiple requests to this endpoint, our server would be in trouble. So now what we want to do is take that um, HTTP request and we want to move it into an active job class. I can create an active job class using the Rails scaffolding. So I'll jump over to VS Code and I can do vimrails generate job and I'll just call it update SKU. SKU. So this generates an active job class and a spec. We won't worry about the spec uh, in this video, but I'll jump over to the, the class. You can see it's fairly simple. We just have this perform entry point that accepts um, any number of arguments. So I'm going to jump over to the controller going to take cut all of this logic and paste it in here so now the uh, active job will be performing this API call and I can also change the args so that we just get uh, book params oh, sorry let's just call it book name There we go. And then where I was previously doing the net HTTP call, I can call the um, active job itself. So I do that by doing perform later. And I can pass in the params that I'm interested in. Uh, in this case, we just have the book params name. So let's test this out again with curl and hopefully we should notice a difference in the performance. So I'll jump back over to the terminal and let's run this curl request again. And what you'll notice is we have the same error, but it was instant well, almost instant. Uh, and that's because the controller is now doing effectively nothing. 
it's just queuing the um, active job and then raising. And let me also show you if I um, just add some spaces here, I want to prove that the SKU server is still getting called. So let's run this. Uh, oops. So we get the response straight away and you can see nothing happens for a while. Um, but hopefully in the background, my active job will hit this server. And there you go. So now I'm just going to tidy up the controller. Let's uncomment these, remove the rays, and let's do one final check with, um, with curl. So we have everything everything back in the controller and let's find the previous curl request oops now I've just noticed that the book name should actually be title and hopefully this is good to go so let's make the request we get an instant feedback and the um, the active job uh, is running in the background. You can see it hits the SKU server here. And there we go. Everything's working. So I hope you found this useful. Um, and I hope you learned how to move complex and um, time intensive operations into background jobs using active job. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.